It's my boy honey. Alrighty guys, I haven't done a food pairing episode in a little bit, so we'll do that today. Brand new Booker's Bourbon 2023-01 Charlie's Batch. And to the right of me, I got some deep fried pork chicharrones that I picked up from Northgate Mexican Market. So we're gonna try those out. Got the fresh made guac the lady was making there right when I was getting this off. I was like, oh, I gotta pick it up. So I got a, a tub of guac to go along with the chicharrones and a darn good whiskey right here, uh, Booker's Bourbon, brand new 2023 batch one. So we'll try those two out and then I'll give you my thoughts on the whiskey and uh, we'll go from there. All right, let's go for the whiskey first. Stand up. This thing comes in a, comes in a wooden box. So that's the unique thing about all Booker's bourbons. They all come in this wooden box presentation. So that's really nice. I like the, I like that. The presentation goes a long way when it comes to not just bourbon, but in everything. I think it, the looks, the visual appeal goes a long way. So here's the, here's the actual bottle. It's a 2023 batch 01 Charlie's batch. It came out recently, maybe like a month ago. I think California is sort of just getting it now. It's 63.3% alcohol, 126.6 proof. It's aged seven years, one month, and eight days. So usually Booker's is around six years or so. Uh, if I'm if I'm mistaken, let me know at the bottom. Uh, all the Booker's that I've seen, probably 2021 or 2020, they're all around six years, maybe seven. So it's on the older side of things. For those of you who are not too familiar with the Booker's bourbon, they're made by the same folks that, that make the Jim Beam whiskey. The parent company makes uh, the Booker's, Jim Beam obviously, Basil Hayden, Knob Creek, that's another one, right? So the, all those whiskeys are under one umbrella and this is one of them. Let's crack this open and then see what's what. Cool things about uh, Booker's bourbon. Ooh, smells like very thick maple syrup already. It's called the Charlie's Batch. I looked it up. It's called the Charlie's Batch because it's named after oh, a little plaque here um, explaining why it's called the Charlie's Batch and all the details of the bourbon. It's called the Charlie's Batch because it was the guy who made actually the, the wooden box for all the bookers. His name is Charlie and they sort of wanted to honor him and, and remember him and all that stuff. So they named it after him. That's a very nice gesture, right? The dude's been making wooden boxes for years and years and that's good. All right, so let's give it a four. I could already tell it's very like viscous, very viscous. First thing about Booker's, it's a good bourbon, a solid bourbon. I think it's better than average bourbon in general. They usually come out with four batches every year like some of the other Heaven Hill products, right? And the last two batches of 2022, I think Pinky's batch and Kentucky Tea batch, they were excellent. I tried a pour of those two. I thought they were really solid, very like, deep flavors, long lasting, excellent finish. I thought they were excellent. The Booker's was considered a decent bourbon, but not that desirable. But for the most part, the consensus is you love Booker's bourbon because of its bold and, and just punch you in the face kind of experience that you have, or you just don't like it because it's just too much of that stuff. And it's not sort of in line with, you know, the Buffalo Trace bourbons that are nice and easy and smooth to drink. This is not like that. It's gonna take your palate for a ride and it's one of those kind of uh, bourbons. All right, so let's go for the nose. I could already smell like the really thick maple syrup coming through. Not much ethanol burn. It's 126.6, so it's up there, it's up there. It's up there, it's pretty strong. A little bit fruit notes, like apple, fresh apples. I'm expecting some like nuttiness coming through on the, on the nose as well and also palate, but I'm not detecting anything on the nose. Just a lot of like maple syrup and honey, like thick honey. I don't know if you can see it. The viscosity is real thick. It's just clinging onto the sides of the glass. Let's go for a swig. Cheers, everybody. It's 
sweet. The maple syrup comes through, but it's not overly sweet. The sweetness gets quickly overwhelmed by the, the real deep charred oak taste. And although it's 126 proof, and it's, I haven't had a drink today, and it's not that hot. It's not that hot at all. Like nutmeg, like cinnamon nutmeg, spices on the mid palate and towards the end. The finish in the mouthfeel is excellent. It's excellent. It's just clinging to everything in my mouth. Let's go for another swig. Mm. It's real tasty. It's thick maple syrup, thick honey, baking spices, maybe some like cocoa, like some little bit of coffee note towards the end, like a bitter coffee note as if you're chewing on just coffee beans. Not just like a, not like a coffee drink from Starbucks, but like like roasted coffee bean. If you ever had a taste, if you just saw it, sort of chew on it in your mouth, that sort of a semi bitter coffee taste. Let me pour it over ice and see how it tastes, and then I'm gonna have it with some chicharron over here. So I thought I'd have it with a with with something fried, something deep fried. Um, I know I mentioned it before, but whatever the food is, right, really deep fried and a little bit oily. It goes super well with any kind of whiskey. I don't know if it's whiskey sort of canceling out the, the fattiness, but man, whenever I have something fried, absolutely delicious. Here's the chicharron. Hopefully I don't break my tooth. And the guac. The lady at the North Gate Market, the, the, the Mexican market, was just making it. So I just got the freshest batch. Here we go. Super crunchy. I'm just gonna double dip. Mm. I don't know if you see it, but outside is super crunchy and inside is so moist. So moist and tender. It's like a night and day contrast in one food. Mm. Cheers. Oh, it tastes different. Mmm, so sweet. So sweet. I taste some vanilla coming through. More sweet, it's gotten sweeter with the ice in there. Maybe tone down the proof a little bit. Yeah, I taste the apples now, like a baked apple, like an apple pie with like cinnamon and all spices and, and nutmeg sprinkles on top. Yeah, apple pie. I'm just gonna eat one and I'll leave these two. The key for the chicharron is an ample amount of guac. Time to wash it down with Charlie's batch. Jim mm. Beam products, especially Booker's, 
Uh, people say they taste a lot of the peanut butter, right? A lot of the peanuts and the like cashews, like a really um, like nutty flavors. I don't taste it as much on this one. Maybe it's because of the ice, but I don't taste it as much. I do taste a lot of the oak and the maple syrup and vanilla in there. Cocoa and coffee. Those are my tasting notes for this one. If I remember correctly for the 2022 batches for Pinky and the Pinky, not Pinky and the Brain, uh, Pinky's batch and, and the Kentucky Tea batch, it was very nutty. It was very nutty and super bitey. This one, not as bitey and less nutty, for sure, for sure. So if you like that kind of profile, pick up a, pick up a bottle. I think it's, it's, it's definitely good. And I see a lot of people posting like, TikTok videos or YouTube shorts eating uh, chicharrones in their car after they bought it from whatever, you know, you know, market. But I think it's better with whiskey. It's definitely a good pair together. Oily, crunchy food, fried food with whiskey. Can't go wrong, can't go wrong. I guarantee you. Not many things I could guarantee in life, but that as as on one hundred percent as I could get. The thing about this, though, the thing about Tijero is you can't eat more than one or two. It's just a little too much. It's sort of like a crispy bacon, but if you think about it, it's like maybe like six or seven layers of bacon, you know, you know, mashed into one giant piece, right? So if you're eating like two of these, you're eating like a dozen slices of bacon. And I don't know, that's a lot of bacon. Even though I love bacon, like after maybe like the 10th slice, I get, uh, I get all really, you know, nauseated and, and groggy and stuff, but it's still good right now. Last bite. The crop was so better. So fresh. Last sip of Charlie's batch. Okay, apples, apples, cooked apples. Mm. Absolutely delicious. All right, guys, well, that's all I have for you today. What do I think of the Booker's latest batch, 2023 batch one, Charlie's batch? Uh, I think it's solid. I think it's excellent. I think it's definitely on par with the Kentucky Tea and the Pinky's batch. Definitely a little bit different, easier to drink with less nutty profile. So definitely different than I expected. And the proof point is 126, but it doesn't hit me like 126. I'd say probably around 110, 115-ish. So it's definitely easier on the palate than the previous batches. So I think for, I picked it up for $80. For $80, I'll definitely pick it up again. Now I think for, you know, liquor stores or secondary, that these are going for $100, $120 or whatever. Maybe it's worth it for you if you want to try Booker's. Um, and I think it's definitely a solid bourbon. But at $80, it's solid, solid pickup. I highly recommend it. All right, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thanks for joining me. I really enjoyed the chicharrones too with the with the guac. Uh, the guac was especially creamy and it's fresh and went really well with the crunchy and oily and, and flavor bomb of the of the pork belly uh, chicharron. So really enjoyed it. Pairing was excellent. I'm gonna say it again for like the third time. If you have oily and fried food and crispy food, try it with the whiskey. Try it with the whiskey and put a little bit of ice cube in there if you want. I mean, try it together. I think it goes excellent. It's excellent. It's a combination in your mouth. It's like a explosion by itself, the food, and then it's like times two when, when it meets the whiskey in your mouth. So thanks again, everybody. Appreciate it. Have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.